So I know we talked a little bit about implicit differentiation when we did uh, one of those examples in 3.2, and you had a bonus question on your quiz that involved this a little bit slightly, but we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna talk about implicit differentiation more explicitly today. How's that? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for laughing. That was a bet. All right. Oh, all right. So can you see that okay? It's very small. Yeah. It's pretty good on that TV. All the derivatives you've done so far have been explicit, right? Like, you know, you're finding uh, the derivative of something that has an x squared in it and or y is by itself on one side, and it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, but sometimes, and, and again, write down as much of this that you need to write down. Uh, sometimes, uh, here are some examples, right? So these are all explicit. Y by itself, y by itself, y by itself. Then you're, you know, you're, you're fine dy over um, dx, and it's, it's pretty straightforward, okay? Uh, find a y prime or f prime of x or whatever it is, right? But sometimes um, you can't, where the relationship between x and y is only implied. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to qualify this by saying there are some of these equations that you're going to see right away that you might be thinking, well, I could just get y by itself and, and, and find the derivative that way. And th the fact is it's true, and there are some problems that we'll go over where one way will say use explicit differentiation and one will say implicit. You should get the same answer. But the, the trick is, is you need to know both, have both tools in your tool belt, one, and two, oftentimes implicit differentiation, <coughs> differentiation ends up being easier. So um, trying to just kind of uh, uh, apply it appropriately. Here's some examples, okay? You've got, like, uh, they're saying that the relationship between X and Y is only implied. Well, yeah, but I could solve for Y, you know? I, I, mm, I guess I could solve for Y, or no, nah, I could solve for Y over here. This one's a little trickier, right? I've got a Y, I've got an XY. So whenever you see an XY some, sometimes, where the X and Y are connected by multiplication in some, some form or fashion, or oftentimes in division, you're thinking implicit differentiation, okay? Um, and so you have that, uh, that, that option. And then lastly, of course, uh, it is possible to differentiate uh, implicit equations using implicit differentiation, obviously. That's the whole point. All right, so here's some steps. Am I going too fast? Are you, write, are you writing all of this down or are you just writing parts or maybe a little? Most, okay, then I will wait. All right, let's, so let's, uh, let's talk about some of the steps that you're gonna take. Um, in, 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 yeah, I'm just gonna put them up here, okay. So first step, you're gonna differentiate both sides with respect to x, this is the thing. <laughs> We're gonna differentiate with respect to x. What happened? It was so weird. It was so weird. Anyway. Uh, we're going to we're gonna, uh, differentiate both sides with respect to x. That's what's important here. Um, sometimes there may be, uh, you know, a t thrown in there, so you're going to differentiate with respect to t. You'll be able to tell from the example which one you're uh, differentiating by. Keep in mind the chain rule. We talked this about this a little bit. Okay, and all this is saying is, is that you can't just straight up, you know, differentiate y squared and say 2y and be done. Right? It's got to be 2y times dy over dx. You have to leave that dy over dx, which will probably, I think in, in this presentation I gave both. Sometimes I did y prime, sometimes I did dy over dx. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing, and, and I'm going to, you know, let you use whichever way. Yeah, so so the, the chain rule factor is because since we are differentiating with respect to x, you also have to take the derivative and, and have the, the dy dx or the y prime, that's that chain rule factor. And, and when we go through some examples, you'll see what I mean. Um, then you wanna get all your y primes or dy over dx, whichever way you wanna write it, get those all together, and then essentially get them by themselves, right? Because that's what we're trying to do. And, and in like that, that one example um, that we did the other day, right, we did that. We differentiated the y, we were, uh, and then we chain ruled it with the y prime because we were differentiating with respect to x. And then eventually we got y prime by itself and resubstituted y in. Okay. And so the same kind of thing is going to happen here. You're going to factor out the y prime because our goal is I know I'm going fast through this. And then you're dividing everything to get y prime by itself. 
and I'm going fast through this because one, the things are short, and two, we just did this the other day in our notes, right? And so, um, not a new concept. Just looking at time, I think we may, um, we may not get through all the examples today. But we'll go, so we can go through a few examples tomorrow, and then you'll have just the rest of the time to look. So here's the, the first example. And, and, I, and I like that one of the things that I like about this workbook is it doesn't always just give you straight, boring exercises. Sometimes it gives you context like this, and you have to, you have to dive into it a little bit to figure out what is it that they're actually asking. Now, my, my qualifier here is that you're going to use implicit differentiation. Could you get y by itself and use explicit differentiation? Yes, you could. Um, you would have to do it twice because you're going to have a plus or minus, which is why implicit differentiation works out better. Okay. <clears throat> now... Uh, of course, when we're finding the slope of the line tangent, what quantity represents the slope in our equation? Well, we don't have it there yet, but what will, what will signify the slope? Dy over dx or y prime, okay, either one. And so what we're trying to find here is, is one of those two things. Now, when I went ahead and did these problems, um, I started off um, doing both, and then I switched to something that is easier, I think, to write. If what you, if you prefer, if you're, if you're a dy over dx person and that's what you prefer, go for it. Y prime is less writing, so I wrote y prime more often. I put them both up there, and I set them, I always set both up that way, and just uh, no, it's it's fine. It's personal preference. Okay. Um, so where, where that chain rule factor comes in, because again, we're, we're differentiating with respect to X. So no worries here, no worries here. This is where we're going to have that chain rule piece where we're going to still have to have the, the Y prime or the DY DX. Okay. And so, uh, how many of you have started it already? How many have finished it already? Okay, good. All right. So here's where we're at. Okay. And this is what I'm saying. I give, I give, I, give, I did it both ways. Um, again, keeping in mind then when you differentiate with respect to x of something with y, that's where your dy, dx, or your y prime. How, just a quick poll. Is anybody besides me a y prime person? All right, me and Joe. The rest of you are dy, dx people, yes? Okay. What's that? It seems a little easier to make the switch. You might have to make the change? Yeah. Okay. It's just less, less writing. There's literally no difference, right? I, I, if, you, if this bothers you and you like this one, you're fine. Keep doing that. Do what you're comfortable with, okay? And ultimately what we're doing is solving for this first, and then we're going to have to plug in, and then we'll find that slope, okay? So, of course, we got to get the... So I, this stops now, and I just continue over here. All right, so we're going to move the x over, and we're going to divide by 8y, and there's my y prime. Subtract 2x, divide by ay. I probably reduced, be my guess. I did. Do you have to? Of course not. You don't have to. Um, and then, <laughs> here's my shortcut. Okay, so if you like dy, dx, there. <laughs> there. If that makes you feel better, there it is. Now, is that it? Are we done? No. Okay, because what else do we have to do? We actually have to find the slope. So... Uh, y prime, okay, equals, now I got to plug my x in, I got to plug my y in, and so my slope is negative 3 eighths. Final, final. Good with that? Okay. Um, let's see what else I got. I think I give one more example. I do have one more. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can do it. Okay. Example five. Again, these are all in your book, so you can always get them from there too. 
Okay, so here we've got the cotangent of y equals x minus y. We don't have a choice here. We have to use uh, implicit differentiation because that y is connected to the cotangent. Unless we start taking the arc <coughs> cotangent of both sides, which I, I would uh, ask you to seek professional help if you wanted to do that, um, that, would be a, that would be a mistake. Don't do that, please. Okay. Now, so this also requires us to know some of our crazy trig derivatives that, you know, maybe you don't always remember. Um, I mean, I don't know what your, your trick is, but oh, should we just stop here and finish this tomorrow? Yes, let's do that. Stop here and finish this tomorrow. Did I, did I show you this one yesterday? Yeah. Oh, we wrote it down. Okay, we didn't. Okay, right. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so go ahead and try and finish it. Yeah. This one, I, I think what I mentioned was because the y and the cotangent are connected, that's, there's no way to get the y by itself. Yeah, so implicit differentiation, infer yeah. implicit differentiation is your only option. Um, again, you could go one of two ways with it. Uh, I'm gonna end up working this one over here because I like the y prime better. I guess maybe I probably should have done it this way since it did ask for dy dx, okay? So the um, derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Of course, and then you have to chain rule dy dx. That's that implicit piece. Um, derivative of x is one, then just y is dy dx. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this one over here. Gather the y primes together, um, move everything else to the other side. So in this case, I'll end up with y prime minus um, cosecant squared y times y prime equals one. And then I'm gonna factor out the y prime Okay, and so the trig identity that you guys were searching up and trying to figure out, one minus cosecant squared y is um, negative cotangent squared y. Okay, we good so far, you found that one. Okay, then it's just a matter of swinging that to the other side, dividing it out. Uh, yeah, that T, is it? Right, let's see if I can fix the zoom on that one. Um, and so we just flip that, right? Negative tangent squared y, okay? Did you guys have that? Or do you have a question on that? Yeah? No, I you have questions? Do you see where you went awry if you did? How many did have it right? All right. Oh, well, it's probably because you were looking at your trig notes. Okay.